Hello everyone, welcome back to Blackwell Epiphany. Alright, I need to figure out the name of the person next, living next to George Austin's apartment. I'm pretty sure it's Jocelyn, or at least it's the same voice actor. But I'm pretty sure it's actually Jocelyn. I just need them to discover that. I've got a couple ideas. Only vague ideas, but one thing I want to do first is go back home. As somebody mentioned, something that I forgot to do is... Well, I was looking over everything in the apartment. But I only did that with Rosa. I didn't do it with Joey. Apparently he has a lot to say. This thing was on Lisa Tenzin's shelf. She was a fake psychic uptown. This guy was Joe Gould. I never met the guy, but from what Red tells me, he sounds like a real jerk. A dog leash? She hangs the craziest stuff on this wall. <laughs> He sees, he sees her stuff very differently from how Rosa sees it. Just a notepad. Red was always scribbling away in it. Now she just pokes at that hunk of plastic. Those used to belong to an artist named Claude. Bit of a kook, but he didn't deserve what happened to him. Some kind of pills. Not sure what they do, but the dog next door has never been the same since munching on one. <laughs> it's a Gold Tech mug. An article about the death of Gavin and Lisa. Good riddance to both of them. Danny and Linda. I still can't believe this picture survived all this time. It's a poster for a picture called Water Under the Bridge. Jeremy Sams. He helped us take down a bad guy last year. Shame he had to die to do it. Always felt kind of bad for Paul Meltzer. Must have killed him to know what his foundation was really costing people. Patricia Blackwell. She didn't like me much. The feeling was mutual. Just books. Some kind of door intercom. Lauren Blackwell. In happier times. Well, happier for them at any rate. I was mostly ignored. Jack and Maria Blackwell. How long ago was this, anyway? Thirty years, at least. Poor kids. At least they're all at peace now. This calendar is dated five years ago. Timely. That clock is right twice a day, but not much else. Red's computer thing. I still have no idea how it works. Nothing on there but a couple articles she wrote for some newspaper rag. It's full of trash. It's the door to the closet, or as Red calls it, her bedroom. I guess it's a small bedroom? Probably the oldest thing in this room. Except for me. Nah, I'll let her keep her privacy. Okay. Let's go visit Grace Church. See if the guy here knows anything about the Grace Group. Hi, remember me? Yes, and would you please keep your voice down? Sorry. Have I already asked him about the Grace Group? I'm not sure if I have. Don't quite remember. I'm looking for information on the Grace Group. Grace Group? They used to meet here, in the basement. Some kind of self-help group? There are hundreds of so-called Grace Groups. And they all have meetings in the basement. You will have to be a bit more specific than that. Oh. Uh... Hmm. Do you know any Michaels? In my line of work, I know more than I can count. Do you recognize this phone number? I'm afraid I haven't memorized a phone number in over ten years. Perils of modern technology. Yeah, that's what I keep telling her, but you think she listens? So there's this woman that might have died in a penthouse apartment. I'm afraid I don't know who you're talking about. I am sorry. There are tons of case files listed here. I'm not going to ask about them one by one. Well, thanks. I'll be going. Stay safe. Okay, so there's a bunch of different grace groups. I need to be more specific. Hmm. That was not very fruitful. Let's go back to the police. 
See if maybe Office they can give me information. Work? Yeah, yeah. What can I do for you? Do you know if any of George Austin's neighbors died recently? It's not in any of the reports. Do you have a name? No, not yet. But she lived across from George. Can't you look it up that way? I can't, no. The way the system works, I can only look it up by the victim's name, not address. Sorry. Wonderful. There are tons of case... Do you know anyone named Michael? Um, you're gonna have to be more specific than that. Oh, you know, Michael. My Michael, you know Michael. He's yeah, Michael, come on. Does this phone number mean anything to you? Not really, but I can trace it for you. Ooh. Trace it? Run the number, see who it belongs to. Within reason, anyway. Where'd you find it? I found it on George Austin's phone. Oh, we ran that number already. You mm. did? Yeah. It belonged to Grace Church. Mm. Probably calling for donations or something. Yeah, or something. Hmm. Thanks anyway. I'm leaning towards the... something. You don't think it's relevant that both- I think- Well, I'd better go. Thanks for the help. Sure. If the phone is nearby, it's not ringing. I'm thinking, what if I go in the same room as that guy at the Grace Church and call the number? What is phone ring? Hmm? Michael? Let's see if my hunch is right. If the phone is nearby, it's not ringing. Hmm. Excuse me. Yes. This number originated at Grace Church, yep. I checked with the police. This number belongs to a phone in this church. A man I'm looking for made a phone call from this number. His name is Michael. It's very important that I find him. I'm afraid I don't know who you're talking about. I am sorry. <sighs> Are you sure you don't know anybody named Michael who made a call from this church? Quite positive. Are you sh quite the telephone that uses this number? Where is it? Why would you need to know that? Michael used the phone. Maybe he left a clue behind when he did. And he could have used any one of a dozen offices in our administration wing. Really, over a dozen? Yes. So if you want to locate Michael Cooper, you'll have to find another way. Cooper? There we go, Michael Cooper. Wait, Cooper? Pardon? You said Michael Cooper. Isn't that the gentleman you're looking for? <laughs> no, I just said his name was Michael. So you did. Slip of the tongue. My apologies. It is quite late and I'm tired. Okay, so you do know him. You need to tell me who Michael Cooper is. I told you I don't know any Michael Cooper. You need to tell me- I That tactic ain't working, sweetheart. You need to come at this some other way. Well, thanks. I'll be going. Stay safe. Right, well, back to the police, but I can also try an internet search first. If he's a celebrity of some sort, which he's probably not. But he might be. Let's check. Huh. So Michael Cooper was a priest. Mm. Interesting. New York Theological Seminary alumni. 1992 to 1996, currently based at Unknown. Officer Palmer? Yeah, yeah, what can I do for you? Do you have a record of a Michael Cooper in your system? He's a priest. Let's check. Sorry, whoever he is, there's no file on him. Wonderful. He appears to know a lot about what's going on. He even knew about me and where I was the other night. Well, I'd better go. Thanks for the help. Sure.
Alright. What now? I know he's a priest. Talking to Father Olman or whatever his name was is not getting me anywhere. So, where does that leave me? So these are from Michael. It's been a long time, almost too much time. Alright, so they're both priests. They both knew each other. Maybe they were in priest school together. Mm-hmm. We're all in danger. We are going to look for her. We. Not I, but we. Plural. The bestower, which is me. Bok choy, garam. It's either a shop. You know, I still have this... I still have this monitoring software, I think. I don't suppose I can install it on his tablet? Not that that would actually do anything. Oh wait, no. Never mind. I don't. I used to. It's gone. Which is actually quite nice. With my inventory cleared, now I can focus on... not worrying about a bunch of items to use. Joey, could you come out here? You... Huh. We'll see if what I've done is open up any dialogue options with the woman in the apartment, aka probably Jocelyn. Hi there. Hello again, mister. What brings you by? Come on, what's... No, you'll fix... Nope. Come on, you'll... Well... I feel like I'm going to find him if I just go everywhere and use my phone. No answer. Like I'm going to find the phone in, buried in the snow or something. No answer. No way. Hi. Yes, miss? Did George know anyone named Michael? I'm afraid I don't know. Does this phone number look familiar? Mm. There's no point in still asking about the clothing drive, right? Because I, I notice it is still a dialogue option. Hi. Yes, ma'am. Can you tell me anything else? No. But if you have any old... Better not. If... No. Doesn't seem so. It's gotta be something here, right? Is there no way for me to get to the rest of the church? It says Grace Church in New York. Epi Weekend organ meditations. It says Grace Church. Of course. It's a schedule of services. Nothing is going on at the moment. If the phone is nearby, it's not ringing. So we 
Making sure I can't like walk into the back room or something. No? Uh, I better not. Especially with that priest in plain view. Here we go. Joey, blow on him. No reaction. Probably feels drafts all the time in a joint like this. Fair enough. Excuse me. Yeah. Michael Cooper. He's a priest too, isn't he? So? So, it's a pretty big coincidence, wouldn't you say? I... Um... Okay, I guess finally he's gonna stop lying to me. Please stop lying to me. I'm not lying. You're not telling me the whole truth either, are you? I made a promise. He came to me scared, begging me to protect him, to give him sanctuary. He was ranting. I should have turned him away, but we roomed together at the seminary. We were close friends once. What could I do? You can take me to him. He's raving. He's mad. He, he says he's in a battle for his very soul. Is this true? Yes. Yes, it is. <sighs> he's in the school. It's closed for the winter break, so it seemed like a good a place as any to hide him. Here's a key. The entrance is around the corner. Please, do whatever you must. Just don't come back here. Don't worry. So, thrown out of a church. I suppose with our record, it was only a matter of time. <laughs> the entrance to the school is around the block. Let's go. Another restraining order. Man, the art is so beautiful. Look at the glow of this light on the snow. Just gorgeous. No need to pay attention to that. There aren't any cars out tonight. I'm not going to run into the street. I'll stick to the sidewalk. Lafayette Street looks cold and icy. Better stick to the sidewalk. It's the front door. Pretty solid. Let's see what Joey thinks of this. Things like traffic lights stopped having any meaning around the time I died. Hmm, good point. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall uh, not. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Uh, he leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Interesting light show. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Somebody seems to have cast a spell. A table before I'm assuming that's some sort of a protection ring. Enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. I think he's reciting the Psalm sure, of David. From the books I've read, it's supposed to guard against life. evil. And I will dwell in the house of the you, Lord forever. Michael? Stay back, bestower. I've got a gun. Just a second. I said stay back. Why would he want to kill me? He knows I'm the bestower. Surely he knows that I'm someone who wants to protect him, not hurt him. Whoa, calm down. I'm not here to hurt you. Oh yeah? Tell that to Leah and George and the others. Others? How many of you are there? You don't even know that. You don't know a thing, do you? This wasn't the plan. Plan? Yes. Our brilliant plan. We get the bestower to escort our souls to the next world. Protect us from this force that is after us. Instead, you let us be destroyed. Were they all just gonna, like, kill each other and then have me take them to the, the next life? Was that the plan? I tried. Honestly, I tried. Tried? I'm sure that was a comfort to George and Leah while their very souls were being torn apart. I'm sorry. Whatever is going on, it's new. I've never seen anything like it before. I see. And what about him? Huh? Your friend. The man behind you. He hasn't said a word since you walked in here. Uh, me? D do you mean me? Yes, you. Don't look so surprised. 
How else could I have known who you were? Now get out of here. You've been nothing but trouble ever since George went to look for you. I'm so sick of guns. Very true. People keep pointing guns at me and it's very annoying. I am so sick of guns. Yeah, well, I'm sick of all this. Temper, my host. That voice, it can't be. Madeline? I told you to stay in the other room. Yes, my host, I know. But I had to intervene. These two know me, if I may. Fine, fine. Just make it quick. I'm losing concentration. Malone, Blackwell, what a pleasant surprise to see you both again. Yeah, surprise is the word. What the hell are you doing here? Is it not obvious? You freed me, Malone. Brought me back into this world. And as befits all of our kind, I had a host waiting for me. And so I have returned to my former duties. Look, as much as I am touched by this reunion, I need to focus. Perhaps we should all converse outside. Fine. Outside. Just leave me in peace. Thank you, my host. Yeah, so he has to be a bestower, too. You're a bestower, too? What gave it away? A spirit guide who won't leave me alone? <laughs> Look, maintaining this circle leaves me a bit... cranky. Sorry. If you can help, great. If not, well, I've made my peace with it. Just go talk to her. She's outside. I need to concentrate. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green... Blackwell? Malone? It's been a... long time since we've been able to converse. It's been almost six months since Joey freed you. How come we're only seeing you now? I admit the transition hasn't been... pleasant. I have had three hosts since returning to this world. Mm. The first was an old man on the edge of death. He lingered for six weeks before finally succumbing to the inevitable. When the old man passed, I became bound to his niece for a time. She ran every time she saw me. I tried to keep my distance, give her time to adjust. But in the end, she fell down the stairs in an attempt to flee. The poor woman died, and I was passed to her brother, the man inside. Jesus. You should really call me Rosangela. Forgive me. When you are as old as I am, all the names blur together. So I tend to address those I speak to by their family name. It is just easier that way, and less painful. I'm afraid it is a habit that is difficult to break. So how'd you like being on the outside, as it were? I imagine it's better than being trapped wherever you were. I had thought, I had hoped, that I would pass on. That being brought back to the mortal world would force me to obey mortal laws. Instead, I... No. It is not to be. I have returned to my former duties, therefore I must have further work to do. But yes, it is nicer than being trapped in the void. Did I ever thank you, Malone? Not as such, no. Well, I must rectify that. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Any time. Do you know what's going on? Why are these souls being attacked? I do not know. I wish I did. Like you, we saw it happen. We saw a soul being torn apart and could do nothing. I'm afraid my host became a little... unreasonable after that. Why was George looking for me? We needed a bestower. A proper bestower. My host and I were not up to the task. Eh? It might be due to my time in the void. It might be because my host's soul has been marked by... Whatever is out there. But in any case, our abilities are limited. We cannot even help lost souls move on as you do. We can see them and talk to them. But that is all. Hence why we needed you. Lucky us. So what can we do? We don't even know what's going on. <sighs> our theory was that you could help move these poor souls into the next world before they were destroyed. But it appears that it did not achieve the desired result. You could say that, yeah. You must investigate. My host and I are restricted, but you two are not. If anyone can help uncover why these poor spirits are being attacked, and stop it, it is you.
Do you know anything about this Grace group? I know that it meant a great deal to my host, as well as his friends. Whatever happened at those meetings, it greatly improved their lives. But obviously, it came at a cost. That's exactly why I'm very suspicious of it. Again, sounds too good to be true. George Austin was apparently a loser before, and then he went to the Grace group and found a purpose in life. And what did he become? An art dealer? And then he made tons of money? And Leah Piero figured out that she should join the police academy and suddenly she had a, a purpose in life? After the Grace group? It, it's just... That's too perfect. What can you tell me about Father Michael? Cooper is my host. We have not had the time to get to know each other better. Is he always this ornery? Do have some pity for him. He has lost his uncle, his sister, and several of his friends. He has been forced to accept the spirit world and the possible loss of his own soul. All within the span of a few weeks. If anyone deserves some understanding, it is he. Fair enough. There's a ghost haunting the empty apartment across from George Austin. I see. Well, you know your duty. Go and save it. I would like her to come to Jocelyn. Because I'm pretty sure they'd recognize each other. And, again, unless it's just Jocelyn's voice actor and not actually Jocelyn. Hmm... There's a ghost haunt- I see. Do you know a place called the Karth House? I'm afraid I do not. Why do you let Father Michael push you around like that? It is what my host wishes. So? Simply that. I must do what my host commands. Huh. Right, seriously. What's the story? No story, Malone. If my host wishes me to leave him alone, I leave him alone. That- actually works? Of course. It is my duty to do so. So, Joey... <laughs> no! <sighs> of course, some of us take our duties more seriously than others. Well, I suppose we'll talk to you soon. Of course. Right. I'm not sure any of this has actually helped me figure out what to do next. Hey, Maddie? Yes, Malone. So you don't know anything else about this Grace group? I'm afraid not. You know as much as I. Can you tell me anything else about Michael? Sadly, no. We have not had the time to- There's a ghost haunting the empty apartment across from George Austin. I see. You ever go to the Karth house? I'm afraid- <laughs> Right. We're gonna take off, plan our next move. Of course. Come here for a minute. Yes? This place was around even in my day. You ever go here? No, it's one of the more expensive private schools in the city. Not really an option for a foster kid like me. Right. Michael looks scared out of his mind. Guess I can't blame him, considering. Let's keep talking to him. Alright, let's head back in. Father Michael? Yeah? I can't believe there's another medium in New York. Medium? Sorry, I mean bestower. I've been calling myself medium for so long I sometimes forget. Uh-huh. I mean, it's not like I have anyone to talk to about this stuff. Well, nobody living, anyway. Hey, look, I'd love to swap ghost stories with you, but it takes all my concentration to maintain the circle. Right, sorry. Maybe we'll have coffee later? You know, after we save your soul and everything. <laughs> Sure, sounds great. <laughs> he sounds totally into it. Um, about that circle, how did you cast that magical spell thing? It's very pretty. What is this circle? Oh, this. Madeline taught me how to do it. It prevents anything spiritual from getting to me. It takes some concentration to maintain, so I'm sorry if I seem a bit inhospitable. How did you learn what was happening? You mean that our souls were being taken? Yeah. I... It was a few weeks ago. I was at the bedside of a friend. Jeffrey, his name was. He went to the Grace Group meetings back in the day. Like me. He had been in a car accident. Hit and run. He was dying, and he wanted me there. And when he died, I saw it. His spirit being torn apart. He screamed. I'll never forget that scream. I know. I saw it too. 
Anyway, with Madeline's help, I began looking into other members of the group and learned it was happening to all of us. You know the rest. So you're working with Madeline? Working? I guess you could call it that. I've been too busy being scared to give it any serious thought. So why'd you send Madeline outside? Her presence disturbs my concentration. So she's keeping as far away as she can until this is resolved. What about us? You're the ones who are going to save my hide. For you, I'll make the extra effort to focus. You were pointing a gun at me just a minute ago, now you want me to save you? Okay. Could you tell me about the Grace Group? It was some kind of self-help group? <sighs> about 20 years ago, I was a very different person. I suppose you could call me an alcoholic, although I wouldn't have said it at the time. Then I saw an ad in the newspaper. It promised to help folks like me find their way. It seemed to be some kind of hippie self-help group, but I went to a meeting anyway. I don't remember much about the meetings, but somehow... I had discovered that going to seminary school was something I had to do. It all made sense. Made sense? I just knew it was what I was meant to be doing. And I was right. That is incredibly suspicious. That's how everybody describes it. They don't remember what they actually talked about. They don't remember what they actually did. They just went and then suddenly they had a purpose in life. Hmm. There's something very wrong with this Grace group. But what? Was it some sort of a long-term plan to get people in, in these different positions? I mean, let's see. Somebody They had somebody become an art dealer, somebody become a police officer, and somebody become a priest. Those are all pretty respected jobs, I suppose. But, hmm. I don't know. What about yourself? Is there anything we should know? Look, you're not exactly catching me at my best here. I can't do anything. I'm not a true bestower like you are. Madeline says she's been weakened, or I've been weakened, or something. She doesn't know. Believe me, if I could do what you can do, I'd be out there trying to stop this. But I can't, so all I can do is hide. Did you know that there's a ghost across the roof from George's apartment? Really? Do you know anything about it? Sadly, no. I'm sorry. There are tons of case files listed here. Is there anything else you could tell us about the Grace Group? No. You know everything I do. Mm -hmm. Anything else you can tell me about yourself? No, I just... I just want this to be over. One way or the other. What happened at these meetings? That's just it. I don't remember. Until recently, I never questioned it before. How messed up is that? I'd go, I'd sit down and leave. I'd meet with the other members for coffee afterward. What on earth did we talk about? We must have found something. But I do remember a man, Benjiro. Mm. He ran the meetings. Benjiro? Yeah, Japanese guy. I don't remember anything else about him. Benjiro, okay. That's a start, I need his last name though. How many people went to these meetings? There were six of us. You already know about Leah and George and myself. The others are dead. Who were they? Does it matter? They are dead. Their souls were taken. Even still, tell me. <sighs> Jeffrey Dutta, Heather Goffstein, Peter Fielding. So the man who ran the Grace Group meetings was named Benjiro? Yeah, Japanese guy. I don't remember anything else about him. Could you tell me about Jeffrey? God, Jeffrey Dutta. Talk about transfiguration. When he walked into that Grace Group meeting, I thought he was in the wrong place. I mean, the guy was a Wall Street broker for crying out loud. He could have bought the church and everything in it. But he later confessed that he tried to kill himself. Twice. So what happened to him? He became a professional dog walker. Can you believe it? <laughs> what? He used to pocket millions a year, plus bonuses. Then he was picking up dog crap for $25 an hour and smiling about it. He was hit by a car crossing the street. A hit and run. I was at his bedside when he died. Madeline had been around for about a month at that point, so I saw his spirit rise from his body. I thought I was supposed to help him, but instead I... You know what happened next. Okay, so I was thinking everybody who went to the Grace Group perhaps had... didn't have a purpose in life. Or was not doing very well. Maybe they weren't doing well mentally. 
but it certainly seems like in terms of their job, at least Jeffrey Dutta was doing fine. He was, he was making millions a year. Obviously, he had tried to kill himself, so he wasn't doing well mentally. Hmm. Could you tell me about Peter? Peter Fielding, yes. I never had much contact with him. He died several months ago. I'm afraid it's too late for him. You saw his soul being taken? Well, no. He died before Madeline came into my life, so I can't say for sure. But he went to Grace Group meetings, and he's dead. What other conclusion can I reach? Tell me about Heather Goffstein. You said she was a member of your group. Yes, she was one of us. I asked George if he knew where she was. He told me she was dead. I'm afraid it's too late for her. Is this like Peter? Did you actually see her soul being taken? No, I didn't. Thank heaven I didn't. Seeing it happen once is more than I can take. So they could be alive. Maybe. Probably not, but maybe. How exactly did Peter Fielding die? Why? Are you going to try and find his spirit? There is no spirit! It's gone! You said it yourself. You don't know for sure. <sighs> it was some kind of accident. I'm not sure of the details. I read about his death in the obituaries. Too late for his funeral, sadly, but I said a prayer for him. Can you tell me again how Peter... I told... Just humor me. <sighs> it was some kind of... I read mm -hmm. about his... How did Heather Goffstein die? I'm afraid I don't know. George was the one who kept in touch with her. He told me she died, but he didn't tell me how or when. I suppose it doesn't matter anymore. All right, Michael. We're going to go. Of course. Godspeed to the both of you. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Let's see if I can find this obituary for Peter Fielding. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And though I walk through the valley of the nope. shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. No, did I misspell it? Staff, Peter Fielding. That I definitely misspelled. Peter Fielding. Goodness and mercy will there we Peter go. Peter Fielding the owned a gym life. in Murray Hill. And Worth a visit, I suppose. The house of the Lord Excellent. Peter Fielding, 58, passed away last night after suffering a fatal accident. Peter was a self-described health nut he and personal trainer in his facility. Pastures. Fields' gym was well-loved by many in the Besides Murray Hill neighborhood. Waters, he will be missed. My soul. He it just says fatal accident. doesn't say exactly how. His name's sake. And though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy oh, not Goldstein, staff, Goldstein. Me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Hmm, nothing. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell Pretty sure I'm spelling that correctly. Forever. So no obituary entry. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Hmm. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Okay, do I have any clues to mix right now? I suppose I could search for Benjiro. But I don't think that's going to come up with anything. Nope. Madeline? Yes, Blackwell. Michael said that a man named Benjiro ran the Grace Group meetings. My host has said as much to me, yes. Sadly, he does not remember much about him. Could you tell me about Jeffrey? I'm afraid not. Do you know anything about Peter Fielding? He was in the Grace Group with Michael. I have never met him. He passed away before I became bonded with my host. Michael believes his soul was already taken. He might be right, but he may not be. If his spirit still exists, you are the ones to find it. Do you know anything about Heather Goffstein? She was in the Grace I know of her, but I have never met her. She passed away before my host and I became bonded. I never encountered her spirit. Michael believes her soul was already taken. It is certainly possible. 
but I refuse to lose hope until I see the evidence. Well, I suppose we'll talk to you soon. Of course. I suppose the roof ghost could be Heather. No, I don't see any con But again, I'm pretty sure it's Jocelyn. Pretty sure. Alright, let's head to the gym, I guess. Gonna get some late night exercise, yeah. Looks nice and warm in there. Of course, so would an ice factory right now. <laughs> it seems to open with a key card. Hmm. It says members only. It's a key card reader. Looks like it unlocks the door. It needs a key card. Sticking my hand in it won't do anything. It might. You won't know till you try. What if I dump coffee all over it? I don't have much coffee left. I don't want to waste it. Nice music. Looks like that picture frame fell off the wall. Hmm. I can't touch. Can I blow on it? I'm not just gonna. <laughs> okay. A calendar with a marker pen attached. Looks like some kind of headshot photo. Probably someone famous who uses the gym. Let's see here. Tanya Corsi. Hey, wait a second. Is that? Yeah, that's the spook from George's roof. Oh. Tanya Corsi. I guess she's just got the same voice actor as Jocelyn. It's not actually Jocelyn. Her name is Tanya Corsi. She's the spook from George's roof. <sighs> I'm trying to think of the connections between everything here. Run, 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 like a hamster on a wheel. <laughs> TV showing some energetic broad and yoga pants. Must I define intangible? That looks like a torture device to me. That's one way to put it. Nobody here. Hey, does it look right? Hmm? Hmm? Seriously, does it look right? Does what look right? The light bulb. I could swear it was blinking. It looks fine to me. Huh. I gotta do everything myself around here. Just a forgotten towel. Looks to be in his 50s? It's hard to say. He's got the hair of an older man, but the body that most guys in their 20s would envy. He obviously worked out religiously, for all the good it did him. That would be the health nut. So, I found a spook. It wasn't Peter Fielding, was it? I'm not sure. I didn't ask his name. What? <laughs> I didn't mean for him to actually come out. I just switched back because I wanted to see who was a health nut. So it was Peter Fielding, then. Mm. Oh yeah, he owned the gym. Right. So, yeah, I suppose that's him. Back into it. Hold on, can I pull a Deus Ex? Hey, anyone in here? Anyone? Please? <laughs> well, that was disappointing. <laughs> hey friend, can we talk for a second? Are you sure there's nothing wrong with that light? I'm no expert, but it looks fine to me. <sighs> well, what can I do for you? Hey, is your name Peter Fielding by any chance? That's me. Why? <laughs> no reason. You own this joint, right? Yes, I do. My dad built it. You could say it's a family business. Been running it around 20 years? Seems like yesterday. So what's the story with the lights? I don't know. It's driving me crazy. There's something wrong with them. I can tell. Well, like I said, they look totally fine to me. I'll just have to keep checking. Nice place you got here. Thanks. You look at a joint. Ah, no. I really don't think exercise is going to do me much good. It's amazing how many people think that. You're young. 
Your metabolism is still going strong. The time catches up with you before you know it. You're preaching to the choir, Peter, but I'm still not interested. Well, we're here if you need us. So, how are you feeling? Fine, why? You don't feel strange at all? What do you mean? Well, just hypothetically speaking, you don't feel like you're gonna explode? What, like indigestion? Not quite. I am on a strict diet of wheatgrass shakes and fiber. Indigestion is the last thing I have to worry about. So, you run this place with your old man, huh? Sort of. He built it when he left the army. I took over long ago. So, you run this... Sort of. He built it when he... A lot of things to talk about here. Ever hear of the Grace Group? I understand you went to a few meetings. You know about that? Sure. Wow. Well, yeah. I went to some meetings. It was all I needed. Why's that? Well, I wasn't the most focused of people back then. It's a long story, but in the end, I went to work with my dad running this place. It's been my life ever since. Is there anything else you can tell me about the Grace Group? What's to say? They changed my life. Hey, I think I met a friend of yours, Father Michael Cooper. Michael? Now there's a name I haven't heard in a while. How is he? He's seen better days. I'm sorry to hear that. He'll pull through. He always has. I hear Tanya Corsi went to this gym. She's been coming here for years. That body you see on TV? I take full credit for that. Well, we all gotta be proud of something. You ever go to the Karth house? Dumpy place, Chelsea. No, sorry, I haven't been to the village in years. Do you know anything about Benjiro? Ran the Grace Group meetings. Sure. Well? Um, funny. I can't think of anything to say, exactly. It's been 20 years. Sure, people forget things. That's it, exactly. I just didn't think it would happen to me so soon. Yeah, I think there's more to it than just people forget things. Did you know Jeffrey Dutta? You know Jeff too? Not really, I just heard of him. Good guy. Took care of my neighbor's dog when she was on vacation. So tell me about yourself, Peter. I'm the guy who's gonna kick your butt into shape. Ah, well, we'll see. Do you know Heather Goffstein? You know Heather too. <laughs> Who don't you know? Eh, well, I'm a people person. Wow, Heather. Haven't heard that name in a long time. Can you tell me anything about Heather? It's been... a while. And I didn't speak to her much back in those days anyway. Sorry. So your father keeps popping up here. That must be important. So you run this place with your own... Sort of. He built it when he left the army. I took over... Well, I'll see you around. You got it. I'll be here. I just gotta see what's wrong with this damn light. So, I found Peter. Peter? Peter Fielding? Yeah, he's safe and sound. Spiritually speaking, anyway. Huh. Michael was sure that Peter's ghost was taken. Just between you and me, Michael doesn't look to be sure about very much. Alright, so Roof Ghost is gone. I guess that connection's been made for me. Any other connections I can make? Not that I can think of. Let's go ahead there. So, have you heard of this Tanya Corsi person? Tanya Corsi? Was she in the gym? No, it's the name of our roof spook. Is she famous or something? You could say that. She has a TV show. I think you mean she had a TV show. Let's get going. Let's look up this TV. Let's look up her first. Let's see what she's done. I suppose I can't look up the TV show because I don't know the name of it. Tanya was the host of the Good Morning Show. I remember hearing that they got a new host, but I didn't know this was the reason. 
Channel 11. I think their head office is in Penn Plaza. Can't hurt to ask around. Excellent. City Post obituary. It is with tremendous sadness that we announce the passing of Tanya Corsi after a tragic accident. Most only knew her as the charming and bubbly host of the Channel 11 Good Morning Show, but those who worked closely with her know her as the razor-sharp intellect who paid her dues and became one of the best-loved media personalities in the world. She will be deeply, deeply missed. Joey, could you come out here? What? Oh, I did that again. I always call Joey and then I forget to switch to Joey. Huh. Okay. Let's end the game. I know your name. Hi there. Hello again. What brings you by? You're Tanya Corsi, aren't you? You're in television. Ah, <sighs> I knew you'd get it. That's me, Tanya Corsi, host of the Good Morning Show on Channel 11. Now all the mystery is gone. Do you know anything about a self-help organization called the Grace Group? Grace Group? No, I haven't. Sorry. Do you know a Michael Cooper? I don't. Sorry. So, Tanya, tell me about yourself. <laughs> you want to get to know the real Tanya Corsi. The Tanya that you don't read about in the tabloids and magazines? If you let me. I barely know you, Mr. Malone. Although if you swing by more often, you might learn a thing or two. You ever go to the Carth House? Dumpy place in Chelsea. Sorry, no. Does the name Benjiro ring any bells? Benjiro? Is that Japanese? I believe so. Sorry, I don't know anyone named Benjiro. Do you know a guy named Jeffrey Dutta? Hmm. Sorry, I don't. So, I heard you go to Peter Fielding's gym. I do. Or rather, I did. After what happened to him, I just couldn't... You mean his... Death? Yes. So senseless. So, can you tell me anything about Peter? A brutal taskmaster is what he was, but I can't deny he got results. Nope, I can't deny it either. Do you know a Heather Goffstein? No. No, I don't. Sorry. Well, this conversation was surprisingly unfruitful. Is there anything else you can tell me? Did you ever see him outside of the gym? No. No, of course I didn't. Is there anything... Did you ever... No. Do you know anything about a self grace group? Hmm. Well, Tanya, I have to get going, but I'll see you around. Ta. Get over here. I got something to say. What? You take note of those names Michael gave us? They're in my phone, if that's what you mean. Sure, that's what I meant. Don't know who this Heather lady is, but Michael's convinced she's a lost cause. She could be, but he didn't actually see it happen. She might be all right. For a dead guy, Peter's in pretty good shape. Let's make sure he stays that way. Jeffrey Dutta, that's three spooks destroyed that we know of anyway. We need to put a stop to this before it becomes four. Nope, still a ghost. Let's go to the news station. Let's go poke around there. The local news is airing. They're talking about the weather. Again. It's pretty empty here tonight. I guess the weather even affects the media. 
Looks like he's got a bunch of news wire reports open. Oh, and Minesweeper. <laughs> oh my god, this is the most boring game possible. Ugh, Minesweeper. Excuse me. Hmm? Hi, I'm Rosangela Blackwell. Do you work here? Certainly do. Jim Peebles, senior producer. How can I help you? So what do you do here? I'm the head producer for The Good Morning Show with Kathy Carden. Isn't that Tanya Corsi's old show? Yes, it is. It's pretty empty here tonight. Well, look outside. The weather's horrible and almost everybody commutes to work. Nobody can get in, so we're running on a skeleton crew. Did you work here when Tanya was alive? Yes. Why do you ask? I'm looking into her death. Wasn't it an accident? That's why I'm looking into it, just to be sure. Huh. Well, all right. Jim Peebles. There's the self-help circle that held meetings a long time ago. It was called the Grace Group. Ever hear of it? Sorry, no. Do you know a priest by the name of Michael Cooper? I'm afraid I haven't been to church in a long time. What can you tell me about Tanya? I liked her. Some anchors think they're the be-all and end-all, but not her. She knew we were all in this together and worked well with all of us. That's how you make a new show. Everyone needs to help each other. There are tons of cases. Have you ever heard the name Benjiro? Benjiro? No, I'm afraid I haven't. Do you have a record of a Jeffrey Dutta? He was killed in a hit and run. Sorry, no. Do you know anything about the death of Peter Fielding? He owned a gym in Murray Hill. No, although you've reminded me I haven't hit the gym in a while. I suppose I should go. Do you know anything about the death of Heather Goffstein? Who was she? How did she die? I'm not entirely sure yet. Well, I don't know the name anyway. Sorry. Can you tell me about yourself? Me? Well, what you see is what you get. I started working at a copywriter's desk about 30 years ago. Worked my way up to producer. Been here ever since. Can you tell me about your- Me? Well, thanks for your time, Mr. Peebles. I might be back later. Sure thing. I'm not going anywhere. Okay, I've got one more note, but I still don't know. No answer. <sighs> A lot of things to connect. Is there anything I can connect here? They both worked for the Good Morning Show. No, I don't. If I need to talk to Jim. Hmm. You have returned. We found one of the Grace Group spooks, Peter Fielding. I see. Is he still intact? Yeah, he tried to get me to join a gym. I thought as much. You thought so? What do you mean? You know as well as I do. A spirit cannot be moved from this world until it is spiritually ready. It would appear that is also the case here. But what about George and Leah? From my understanding, they were aware of their death when they were taken. Yeah, they were. Then there is your answer. They were spiritually ready to leave this world, and so were vulnerable. This... Fielding, was it? He is a lucky soul indeed. Until he is made aware, he cannot be taken. Not by you, or by anyone else. So... they're... preying on... They're using me to prey on people. They're using me to soften the ghosts up, basically. Make them ready to leave, and then that's when they strike. So I actually shouldn't... The more I try to help people, the more I'm just putting them in danger. If they don't realize they're dead, they can't be hurt. So wait, this is our fault? 
Whatever do you mean? Leah, George. Just by trying to save them, we destroyed them. I suppose. Yes, it could be seen that way. But please, do not blame yourself. How could you have known? Ignorance doesn't change anything. Listen to me. Whatever or whoever is taking these souls, they were marked long before they died. All we can do now is move forward and save who we can. So what? We just leave the spook to rot? Of course not. It has been known for some spirits to become aware on their own. The right face, the right moment, anything can trigger it. And if that happens to Fielding, no. Our duty is to save him, and save him we shall. How? The usual rules have been chucked out the window. We make a move and he gets hammered, and we're not gonna let that happen, not again. It is a dilemma for certain. You've been around the block a few times, so to speak. Nothing like this has ever happened to you before? The destruction of the very essence of life? No. Such a thing is difficult to contemplate, and to witness it, even more so. We need to think about this, plan our next move. Of course. In fact, I might have an idea along those lines. Mm -hmm. I must confer with my host. Please excuse me. He's okay? Peter's really okay? He is still deceased. But in all other respects, yes. He is as well as can be. This changes everything. You have no idea. You too. Thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I never even considered that Peter's soul could be saved. And maybe Heather too. Yes, Heather. If she wasn't taken, then her soul must still be lost. And this is a good thing? Of course. If a soul is merely lost, it still can be saved. And maybe so can mine. So what's your plan? We are approaching this from ignorance and possibly from fear. Before I was trapped in the void, I was a spirit guide for a very long time. I can learn much from a spirit by looking at it, and talking to it. If Fielding's soul still exists, then it must be brought here. And Heather. Heather's soul must still be out there. And her as well, of course. Peter Fielding's spook is at the gym. It's not too far away. You can talk to him there. Are you kidding? I step out of this circle, who knows what could happen? If I die? There's a good chance I'll be an aware spirit, just like Leah and George, and then... Be at peace, my host. I would not ask you to do such a thing. Well, thank heaven for that. Besides, it is unnecessary. As you say, only spiritually aware souls are attacked. Since this fielding is not spiritually aware, meeting him in his current state would be fruitless. We need to awaken him before I can determine anything about him. Um, won't awakening these ghosts destroy him? Aren't we trying to avoid that? Don't be absurd. We'll put them behind this circle. They will be safe there. And how are we supposed to do that? Spooks like me can't enter the thing. This might surprise you, Malone, but I did think of that. Come here. Take this. What's this thing? Call it a totem. It was made with some of my essence. The circle was created in much the same manner, so it will make a perfect focus. When you awaken a spirit, use the totem to send them directly here. They will remain safely behind the circle until we can determine the next course of action. So I'll be trapped in this circle with Peter and Heather's ghosts? I am afraid so, my host. Well, I suppose it can't be helped. And I guess it will be nice to see them again. Yes. Is there anything else you can tell me about Peter? Anything that can help us? No. Of all the people in our group, Peter was the one I spoke to the least. I think George once belonged to his gym, even took personal training sessions for a while. But George wasn't really the personal fitness type. Is there anything else you- No. Of all the people in our- I think, but- Is there anything- Oops. I think, but- Didn't mean to press it three times. I need to know everything you can tell me about Heather. Well, there was one thing. It was a confession of sorts, you see, and she trusted me. What was it? You don't understand. It was a confession. It might have been a long time ago, but it was still a sacred trust. I can't betray that trust. It goes against everything I believe in. Don't you think that under the circumstances, she would understand? I'm not sure God would. Does it really matter? What's the worst that could happen? You lose your soul. My God, when you put it like that. 
Heather was a prostitute. She wanted to confess, but didn't feel right entering a church. She might have been Jewish, judging by her name, but I think she just wanted to speak to someone who understood. Understood? Someone who had been to grace group meetings. Someone who had had a life-changing revelation, like I did. I don't know what her revelation was, but she wanted to purge herself of her old life. So she asked if I could come to her apartment and listen to her. So I did. Do you remember where she lived? I was a priest entering the house of a prostitute. It's not something you forget. She lived by Tompkins Square Park. Here's the address. Do you know anyone named Jim Peebles? No, sorry. I guess we should get going. Then I do believe our talk is concluded. I will return outside. Um, hey, Madeline? Yes, my host. It's all right. All right? Yeah, stay inside. It's cold out there. I don't feel the cold, my host. I know, I know. Just stay, please, and thanks. It is my pleasure, my host. Go pay a visit to Heather's place. Oh, that was fast. There she is.